So it's Saturday evening in Neuron B, unless you're in a time zone where that isn't the case. You probably have a lot of anger and sadness towards the world. Maybe the story will validate your anger and sadness. Maybe it'll make you feel like that you shouldn't be as angry and sad. All I know is that it's the worst story of the thing that's ever happened to me. It starts about five years ago. My stepmother is a c Like, a huge c She's a Christian scientist and an awful woman who's borderline abusive and hates everyone in the family. She justifies her being a c with, You kids think that I'm an evil stepmother. Anyways, so I might as well be. I used to feel bad for hating her because I just wanted my dad to be happy. I do not feel this way any longer. About five years ago, I was in senior year of high school. A new girl moved in. Her name was Nicole. Nicole was a misfit from the start. She was socially inept, dressed weird, and kept to herself. Whenever she tried to reach out and make friends, she just seemed mean or scary. I knew straight off the bat that we'd get along perfectly. One day, I came up to her after class and referred to some jokes she made in class. She thought I was making fun of her and started to apologize for the joke. I told her it was hilarious. We had lunch. Long story short, she didn't have any friends and she wanted friends and I wanted to be her friend. And we were fast friends. By the end of senior year, Nicole and I are dating. We lost our virginity to each other. We went to college in the same city. As college moved on, our relationship just kept getting stronger. We got an apartment together. We talked about post-college plans. It became apparent as things were going, we might get married. <laughs> and it was amazing. Nicole started to get sick. One day, she found a lump on her breast. Nicole had breast cancer. They took her to the hospital, and in some awful twist of events, in addition to breast cancer, she had brain cancer. The doctor said since they'd found that out early though, they might be able to do some help, but it was a dangerous situation. Each day we spent together felt so important. We were inseparable. I called my dad to tell him. I was devastated about everything. Two days later, I got a phone call. Nicole starts contemplating suicide and she starts rapidly losing weight and hair. I stick by her side throughout the whole ordeal. Skip as many classes as I can. Got another job to help pay for the hospital bills. Realized that I'm running out of potential time to ask her to marry me. Decide that I should ask her to, so that she can have that before it's too late. Call my dad. Let him know my intentions and let him know that if he wants to come, he's welcome, but that my stepmother is not. Says he understands. The next day, Nicole and I come home from hospital, and who is waiting outside of our building, but my goddamn stepmother. Robert, I think we need to talk about what you told your father. Nope, we do not. Robert, you cannot marry Nicole. For one thing, she's gonna die. For another thing, she's choosing medicine over prayer, which is against our family's religion. My whole body goes cold with rage. I've not proposed to Nicole yet. I was going to surprise her. She found out by hearing my stepmother say I was forbidden from it and that Nicole was going to die. Without thinking, I punched my stepmother in the face and she fell to the ground. I walked Nicole into our building without looking back. Continue helping Nicole. One day, the hospital says that they're having trouble with my card. Insufficient funds. That's impossible. There's thousands of dollars in this account. Go check on the laptop. It has been withdrawn. My bank account is empty. My father set up the account with me when I was going to college. He set up my original account when I was a sophomore in high school. Realized that he has the authority to do this. I'm furious and call my father. I let him know that I'm coming for the money and that if I don't get it, I will call the cops and report theft. He tells me that he has the rights to call the police and report my assault on my stepmother. Oh Jesus fucking Christ. Tell him I'm coming over and we can discuss it in person. I yelled at him for four hours and got my money back. Went to the bank the next day to set up a new account that he had nothing to do with. Take care of hospital bills. Now, the whole marriage thing is out in the open. I discuss it with Nicole. She really wants to get married before she dies. It's becoming more and more probable that she will not make it very long. Get an engagement ring. Take her out to this old field we used to hang out in high school, where we had all sorts of memories. It was this huge forestry area under the stars off the main road. Engaged. Holding her was the most beautiful moment of my life. I had cut off all contact with my father and stepmother. Everything seemed to be going alright. Nicole started acting much happier. She said how important it was to her now, that if she was going to die, she'd be dying happy, and she'd be dying with me. It hurt me so much to have to think about it, but knowing that she was accepting this horrible, inevitable outcome was good. We have a low-key wedding with only friends and Nicole's family, and everyone tells me how great it is that I'm doing this for her. 
explained that I'm not doing it for her because of the cancer, that I just wasn't letting it get in the way of what I always wanted to do anyway. Nicole is happier than I'd ever seen her. It was easily the best day of my life. About two weeks into our marriage, Nicole's health starts to get worse and worse. We start going to the hospital far more frequently. The doctor estimates she has about a month to live. Hearing those words are one of the most horrifying moments of my life. Up until that point, there was no set in stone sort of outcome. There was always an admittedly distant hope of things turning out okay. My hopes were crushed. I dropped my courses for the semester and set it up that I'd finish in the fall of the next year. I spend every day with Nicole. We are so in love that it physically hurts to think about her dying. She'd been holding up fine, but now she was starting to get afraid. You need to be with me when I die. I don't want to be alone when I die. She keeps making me promise I'll be there. Three weeks after, she gets the one month warning. We're in her apartment together, just holding each other and listening to music. There's a knock on the door. I go to answer. It is the police. I've been arrested for assaulting my stepmother. I'm put in jail overnight. As I get taken away, Nicole is just screaming, Don't leave me! The next day, I'm let out as my stepfather and stepmother drop the charges. My dad picks me up to say that he hopes I learned a lesson. I tell him I need to go home. He drives me to his and stepmother's house for me to apologize. He keeps me there for two hours because my stepmother doesn't believe I'm sorry when I say so. I am clearly not sorry. My car and cell phone are at the apartment. Eventually, he says, This isn't over and takes me home. I knock on the door. No answer. Oh shit, no, 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 no! Find the spare key. Come in. Nicole is on the floor. She's in the fetal position. The room smells awful. She is dead. Her face is caked in tears. She had texted me and come home about 30 times. My phone was off and in the other room. This happened last year. I've been contemplating suicide ever since. I haven't spoken to my father since this. The reason it came up is because last week he called me to tell me he got diagnosed with prostate cancer and he had two months to live and wanted to patch things up before it's too late. I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out whether or not to, but he never accepted any guilt, nor did my stepmother. And they're still married, so I'm pretty much planning on letting him die knowing that I want nothing to do with him.